to check how much. Yeah, I have to check my life feed. Yeah, it'll go there right. Okay. Intro. <laughs> yeah, I think. Let, let me close that because you know by interfere. Okay. Okay, so worship, how are you? Uh, Andy, I've got three now already. How many have you got, Andy? Uh, about two now, yeah. Okay. Right, so today we are. Um, uh, let, me, let me start the recorder on Skype, aren't it? Okay. <clears throat> because we are ready to start. So let's go. Good evening. Everyone uh, who's joining us, um, I'd like to welcome you, Elliot, again to this talk show, or should I say, analysis of your book, Zimbabwe, My Home, My Frustration, Articles of Defiance. We're looking at, um, uh, not articles of defiance, but we're going to look at pictures of defiance. So I've got several pictures which are in the book. And I'm going to be asking Elliot uh, some of the, to explain, just to tell me, because, you know, um, the picture tells a, a, a thousand words, and the video tells a million words, okay? So with this video, we're trying to turn these pictures into a million words, <coughs> right? So the first picture, Elliot, do you want to greet the viewers first and maybe... Your YouTube audience, I've got a YouTube audience now as well, uh, got up to six now. Yes, uh, thank you, Derek, and thank you, our viewers. I can see, I think I can see about uh, eight viewers so far. Uh, welcome, everybody, from all corners of the world, as we meet again every Sunday, analyzing uh, Zimbabwe, my home, and frustration book, and also the current political situation in Zimbabwe. Everybody, welcome. Thank you. Over to you, Derek. <clears throat> Thank you, Elliot. So, the first picture <clears throat> is of you with a US, former U.S. Pres presidential candidate and human rights leader, yes. the right reverend Jesse Jackson. That was in October 2010. Indeed. Can you tell us how you got hold of the reverend? <laughs> I think that was the most difficult um, approach to unite with the Reverend Jess Jackson, uh, the legend and rev Reverend of United States of America, who was once a senator and also a presidential candidate in, in the USA. Uh, firstly, uh, it's, it's a long story, but I'll, I'll cut it short. Yeah. What happened is um, I first received uh, an email uh, that was 2010 that the Reverend was coming to UK in London uh, soliciting whether I was uh, I was interested in meeting him initially I thought it was just a spam so I ignored it and then after about two weeks another email came now with the sort of itinerary as to where he was going to speak, he was going to speak at London School, School of Economics. Mm -hmm. Then I realized, well, this is no longer a spam because there was now the, the, uh, the program itinerary of his coming to UK. And there was also somebody who was coordinating within UK and there were contact numbers and then I did contact that person. Uh, to say, yes, I think it would be quite interesting to meet Reverend Jess Jackson. Uh, I mean, he's a human rights uh, leader, globally well-known, and given the scenario that we have in Zimbabwe and the challenges we are facing, uh, having a network like Reverend Jeff, Jess Jackson would add value to our struggle. So yeah. uh, this is how I eventually went to London, as to be expected there were so many people who had come to, to hear his speeches uh, at London School of Economics, and it was not easy. Just to talk to him, it was not easy at all. Uh, he was uh, a poor boy from Zimbabwe 
who is trying to have audience with Reverend Jess Jackson in the midst of hundreds and including some bodyguards as it to be expected he is a very prominent person he's, he, he moves with high security yeah uh, and then uh, yes after his his speech he he then uh, went into close session with the, a few prominent people or those who had invited him uh, there were very few and um, then I tried to sort of introduce myself to the security and uh, as to be expected they were not interested in, in hearing about his level. I presume they didn't even know what I was talking about. But I said, no, look, uh, just convey this message to Reverend Jesse Jackson because he is aware that I'm here. And then after conveying to J Reverend Jesse Jackson and then I was allowed in the closed session. So that's how I eventually find myself in the same room with Reverend Jesse Jackson. And uh, I then discussed with, with, with him, uh, updated him on the Zimbabwean situation and uh, the current scenario in terms of the political dynamics and power dynamics. And uh, we were also at the height of um, 2010, yes, we were in the Government of National Unity, but we were, aware, we were aware that the Government of National Unity had challenges. So all those, I managed to update him. And uh, hence, you saw that picture. So yes, this chapter yeah. six, I then sort of assembled certain pictures uh, of a historical nature, sort of yeah, fixed that's points, that's... fixed points in our history. So okay. that is that is one of it. Okay, so moving on to the next picture, um, it's the one where you say, "In memory of my murdered brother Matthew Pepe and those fallen during a hero's commemoration in August 2009." Now, is, is Matthew the one on the left on, on that page? No, uh, those were people... Uh, uh, commemorating. Yes, so those were uh, people okay. who were commemorating. That was uh, that's way you. after his okay. death, yeah. It was way after okay. his murder, yeah. Okay. Right. Uh, the late uh, brutal governor Bodagese with his PA, Mrs. Jones, Yes. What are your memories of that man? I know you, you know, you, you bright shoulders in terms of fighting for political space in, in Bindura. Indeed. Um, maybe our viewers might be also interested that Bodagas knew me well before MDC was formed and uh, well before I joined the politics as far as MDC is concerned. Uh, because I was, I was a, 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 a businessman and uh, some sort of dealings with uh, with the Bindura in terms of supplying computers etc this is where I, I knew him before so yes that picture uh, is optimizes a person whom I knew is maybe an effective governor before and then who turned into a very brutal pe person uh, so th that picture the reason why I did include it in chapter 6 was yeah. to remind people of the brutal uh, border gazing. And as you, I think, as you remember, that border gazing was instrumental in the setting up of the militia, Zanapiaf militia. Yeah. Otherwise, better known as the Green Bomber. So, yes, uh, in putting his picture there, uh, a contrast with his PA, who was. Uh, uh, a white lady, and how eventually he became anti-white, anti-white farmers. Uh, it's, it's a stark contrast with that picture. Yes. Um, the other picture I'm looking at now, first MDC star had in Bindura 2000 general elections, part of a 40,000 strong crowd. The showground at showground Zanopi have disputed the figure and pegged it at 25,000 and you got 11,500 votes from that. Yes. So it means you got uh, more than half 
Indeed. <laughs> no, eleven thousand. No, that's yeah. just that. But uh, half is four thousand five hundred. Are you saying more than half of the people who attended? I mean, more than the Zanu PF figure. No, no, no. You got, you got just under half of that. <laughs> no, no, no. no. Yeah. Zanu PF got uh, twelve thousand something, nearly three, thirteen thousand. I got eleven thousand. The difference was about a thousand something. Okay. With the border gaze, yeah. Yeah. So you almost made it into parliament. Indeed, yes, yes. It was a close fought, uh, irrespective of the fact that they unleashed all their terror tactics on Bindura. And some some of our viewers might remember uh, when Robert Mugabe says, I, I've got degrees in violence. Yeah. He uttered those words in Bindura, and it was after that rally. Okay. Yeah. The, the first star rally of MDC was in Bindura, and that is that picture that you are looking at, which uh, was over 40,000 people. So what's a, what's a star rally? We've seen a lot of politicians are using this term, star rally, and, and some of them are promising <laughs> rice at, at, at star rally. Did you promise any rice? <laughs> no, he did. I think people were ripe for, for a new dispensation, for, you know, for a democratic change. Uh, those people were willing people who came willingly without being coerced, unlike ZANPF. So Star Rally would be a sort of a master rally, uh, which is, you are then advertising it beyond a city or beyond one place. So you get okay. people who come from the whole province, for example. If you've got a Star Rally in much Central, you get people who come from beyond uh, the, that town or that center. So that is yeah. what we call this the star rally. Okay. So that's yeah. that distinguishes it is from just a meeting. Okay. Yeah. So so, that, so, so what I was also explaining is that um, so the first star rally of MDC was in Bindura, uh, where over forty thousand people attended. Yeah. Now, in the same token, the first star rally of Zanu PF was also in Bindura and okay. it follows after the MDC rally. So MDC rally was at show ground in Bindura town. Mugabe is his in the rural part of Bindura, Manenga uh, business center. And it, okay. it was at this business center, Manenga business center, that Mugabe declared that uh, MD MDC and the opposition, the enemy of the state, and that's when he then declared that he has got degrees in violence. Uh -huh. And from then he unleashed violence against opposition, okay, especially in DC. The, the crowd at the uh, It was nowhere half the, 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 the number of people who came for, for MDC Star Okay. Yes. Right. Then you are campaigning deep in Ramsana rural part of the Indura constituency in 2000. How effective was this uh, village to village uh, campaigning? I see there you've got a megaphone. Yes. And you are, if you are backing into the microphone there. Indeed. Yes. How, how effective do you think uh, was that kind of uh, campaigning? Let me just show this to my, my viewers on here. Uh, so this is the, the Musana one. Uh, rural area. Yes, uh, I think it was it was very much effective. When the MDC started, what we wanted to do was to take the struggle to the people at the grassroots. Yes. Uh -huh. So that picture about uh, a meeting when I was in the rural area of Bindura, Musana, communal area, you can see that there were also uh, elderly people there, yeah. very much eager to define their destiny. People had been fed up with the Zanu PF long back, and they wanted yeah. to see a change. And that change could only be de delivered through MDC, because we had very clear policies in terms of turning around the economy. Clear policies in investing in the rural areas, clear policies in empowering the people of Zimbabwe. And it resonated much with the people in the rural areas. Okay. Yeah. And, and uh, it, 
was it was like those days you you would go for two weeks in the rural areas. It is the rural areas, people in the rural areas would protect you. It would be the people in the rural areas who would always uh, amass other people and then he spread the word of gospel of MDC. And this is how MDC became so powerful, anchoring both in the rural areas and in towns. Okay, I'm looking at uh, the next picture of your parents a few days after release. They were abducted on 14th May 2008. Yes. Uh, a repeat of 29 May 2000. Yes. That left your brother deceased and your father with serious injuries. Indeed, yeah. Why, why were they abducted? Your parents. And it was not the first time that they were abducted. And uh, ZANU PF had this appetite that every election they would ab uh, abduct my parents, uh, torture them. And their crime was only for being the parents of uh, an MDC activist and executive. Uh. Nothing beyond that. And this, is, this shows how brutal ZANU PF is. I mean, these are elderly people who want to enjoy their last time on, on, on Earth. And uh, 2008, they were abducted, tortured, uh, leaving my father with serious injuries. He's late now, and uh, partly because of those tortures that were repeated on him every five years up during elections. Uh, then I've got uh, the next one, um, the picture that took the team that took Mugabe to court in America, yes. the York federal court, with uh, Elliot Feve, U.S. attorney uh, uh, Adela Chimina, and Maria Stevens. Yes. Okay. It's a picture. A lot of people may not be aware that you took uh, Robert Mugabe to court in America. What was that all about? Yeah, I think the, the U.S. court was uh, widely reported throughout the, the world in various newspapers, also on televisions, uh, but some might have forgotten. A lot of people still remember that, he, that historical event. Uh, and especially Zimbabweans who, who, who remember that they were Journalists who reported the case in Zimbabwe, and they were they were arrested and tortured. And during that time, uh, Jonathan Moyer was in charge of the propaganda machinery of Zanu PF, and he went on the television to say nothing like that happened. The president was never arrested, and there was no court that set in USA, which eventually turned out to be he was trying to just to do a spin and propaganda. Uh, back to what was it all about? This was a class action. We tried in Zimbabwe to have those people who especially was implicated in the murders, in the murders of my brother, in the murders of Uchiminya, in the murders of other Zimbabweans to be brought to court. And uh, unfortunately, because there's no rule of law, Nothing did happen, and the police were reluctant to yeah. to, 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 prosec to to prosecute or to file charges. Of course, there was political interference all the time. So the next thing was to say, well, uh, let's look for anywhere within. We, we tried even in terms of Sadak, whether there were any laws in Sadak that we could use uh, to get a redress of. Of of, uh, of of the 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 murders that we were pursuing, uh, yeah. we and did it, it we, we couldn't find uh, any uh, recourse in in the Sadak. We couldn't find any recourse within African Union, and then eventually we managed to get a recourse in the United States of America, because they've got a law that they can uh, try even heads of state in other countries. So we filed this in the United States of America, and then it went to federal court. Mugabe won. Mugabe won. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, 
Mugabe was summoned to appear before the federal court in New York, and uh, he didn't, so he was tried in Absentia. And uh, it was after that court, uh, and the ruling was the, he, there was a compensation for uh, 400 million US dollars. Uh, and the court also ruled that they would, they would pursue confiscation of assets uh, towards that ruling. And this is, again, part of the process that eventually uh, made the Congress in the USA to impose sanctions, targeted sanctions on Robert Mugabe in terms of uh, travel ban. So, among other uh, uh, factors. But then, uh, looking at uh, some of you might say, okay, Faye, where are we on that case? After, after the trial, Mugabe realized that the United States uh, of, of America ruling would be a very serious one and he would uh, ignore it at his own peril. He then appealed. After the appeal, it was then pegged from 400 US dollars to 70 million US dollars. But he still uh, appealed and uh, his argument was that uh, he was a member, of, he was head of state, uh, he was therefore immune from persecution. But the court also found him that uh, while he was arguing as a member of state, the murders, the rapes, the destruction of property were perpetuated by ZANU PF, and he was the head or the first secretary of ZANU PF. Therefore, he was guilty as head of ZANU PF. So, yes, so that was the case, and that was the ruling, and it still stands. So, that, okay. that picture you are looking at there is a, is, is a reminder of uh, that historical event in the United States of America. Okay, thank you for that. And then the next pictures, they show the violence that was uh, administered to members of the opposition. There is a young man there who was beaten by militia. Yeah. They, um, there are even pictures of some who are not so lucky. Uh, murdered for being for belonging to the MDC. Mm. Um, there are also pictures of property that has been destroyed, homesteads that have been burned down. Uh, there is one man from Uzumba Baramba Pumwe yes. who was tied to his hard door by the militia and then the heart was set alight. Yes. There is a very disturbing one of a man whose entire buttocks are born. Yes. Uh, he was from the Mbuzi, Mbuzi area, Mashonal and East, brutally beaten on the buttocks by Zano PF militia for being an MDC supporter. Yes. And bent with plastic, and with burning plastic on his back and arms. His home was bent and his animals were doused in diesel and bent alive. Yes. So all those gruesome images uh, showing evidence of the violence which, 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 uh, which took place. Yes. Uh, any comments on that? Yeah, I think it, it, uh, that shows that violence in Zimbabwe is systemic and also it's institutionalized. Uh, it is at the core of the leadership. In other countries, you might have violence perpetuated by individuals, or a group of people with no authority. In Zimbabwe, it's a different situation altogether. Robert Mugabe is at the helm unleashing violence. This is why you find even in 2013 when they actually used uh, Nikov to rig the elections, when they were pretty sure that the rigging mechanism has worked. They, they didn't command violence, they actually stopped the violence. Which means, if you look at it, it is at the highest level of government and leadership of Zanupia. The institutions of, of brutality, 
rest at the doorstep of Robert Mugabe and the senior leadership in Zanupia. Now, those pictures that you are talking about, uh, I looked at it that, uh, yes, I might put words into the various uh, incidents of violence that happened in Zimbabwe. Uh, and sometimes uh, it, it fails to, to sort of convey the gravity of violence that were perpetuated by ZANU-PF. So that's why I decided, well, let me capture it in graphical terms, putting pictures, showing pictures of defiance. Those people who's, who, who were brutally, some of them brutally maimed, brutally made that uh, by ZANU-PF militias and sometimes war veterans, some of them were very innocent, some of them were actually MDC cadets who were defying at all odds the machinery of ZANU-PF. So yes, so those pictures, it's, it's a catalogue of the brutality of ZANU-PF and uh, I want people out there to be able to see the horrific injuries that people have been suffering just for exercising their right irrespective yeah. of the fact that the Constitution of Zimbabwe uh, gives them the right to express their rights, uh, freedom of expression, uh, freedom of speech. But we know in Zimbabwe, although they say there's freedom of speech, there is no freedom after the speech. Yeah. Right. What I've just noticed, um, you know, the, the court case in America? Yes. That is, um, there's a whole chapter on that. Indeed, it's, yes. It's the next chapter. And then, so I think, I think actually, since we've talked about it, we, we can, we can, we can even skip uh, the U.S. court case, chapter eight, so that uh, readers can, can go through the chapter eight and read it for themselves. I agree with and you. Also, yeah. And also I've noticed that chapter nine, uh, chapter 9 has for the names of up to 120 names of MDC uh, supporters, uh, members who were killed yes. at, uh, due to political violence. And there's about 120 of them. So again, I think together with those pictures, I think people can then go through and see for themselves they are, they are, they are, uh, and on number 14 is your brother, M, uh, Matthew Fever of Mandau, you know, 30 April of 2000. Correct, correct okay. yeah. Right, so I think what we'll do is maybe talk a little bit about, um, because there are a few pictures now of your involvement in the diaspora in the UK, Portugal, and stuff like that. Yeah. Maybe just summarize, that those, those are the next pictures that appear. Yeah. And you've also got uh, a picture with the um, Foreign Affairs Minister of Malawi, David Katsonga, 1999. Yes. The foreign, foreign Affairs. Then you've got uh, pictures in Portugal, yes. in which you confronted uh, Robert Mugabe. Then you've got, uh, after that, there's one that I saw here. That's all, that's all uh, Portugal, but there's one with John Macumbe. Yes. He's a low lecturer. It was in Portugal. Well, well. Oh, was it in Portugal as well? Yeah, yes, yes, it was ah, in okay. Portugal. Yeah. <laughs> and, yeah. and, and, yes, he also uh, came to Portugal. It was in Portugal. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you, maybe you can explain what happened in, in Portugal. Yes, and sir. Then, I don't know if we can have time because... Uh, Chapter 10 is just going back to Zimbabwe after nine years. I don't know whether we can do that today or we can do it next week. I you, think, you I think we, can do it th we can do that next week. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So let, let's talk about Portugal. <clears throat> yes, uh, Portugal, I think it was 2007, there was an AU-EU summit. So yeah. Mugabe was, he was invited uh, as all the African heads of state and the summit was in Portugal, Lisbon. So we decided that uh, we would uh, go to 
the summit and confront Robert Mugabe yeah. with clear points demanding uh, the names of those people who have been murdered by his government, by his party. And uh, we also wanted to do a citizen's arrest on Robert Mugabe on the basis of those murders. Uh, they, they were about, I would say, maybe about 20, 22 Zimbabweans. Yeah. So we, we flew to Lisbon. We, th there were other demonstrators also against other uh, leaders who, who were tyrant leaders, including uh, Gaddafi of Libya. And uh, a Zimbabwean contingent, I would say, I have to be very thankful. They were the most forceful of demonstrators in Lisbon, uh, the most visible. And also, as you would expect, of such, such a, a historical summit, there were quite a lot of media. Uh, there was CNN, BBC, Al Jazeera, uh, also TV stations in Africa, including SABC. And we, we, we capitalized on that to convey our message of dismay of Robert Mugabe. By that time, Robert Mugabe was also on targeted sanctions by the EU. And we were also demonstrating against uh, uh, some leadership of EU who were supporting Robert Mugabe's presence. And that included the Chancellor of Germany. Uh, Angela Merkel? Yes, Angela Merkel. Uh, and, uh, and we conveyed our dismay. And I think it, it was right, and it should be. Uh, Zimbabweans all over, wherever we are, uh, we should be united, uh, demand what is right for ours, and demonstrating our, our, our dismay against this regime of Robert Mugabe. And that is exactly what we're doing in terms of, of, of Lisbon. And uh, I think it was a very successful. We made our presence very felt. Can you talk to us about your confrontation with Gaddafi's uh, bodyguards? Well, yes. It, uh, it was during the same time. Um, there, there were people demonstrating against Gaddafi. Uh, those were from the diaspora. There were fewer than Zimbabweans. I would say, well, Zimbabweans were about 22 and maybe they were about 7 or so with placards. Uh, knowing that Gaddafi was a very feared man, even people in the diaspora were very fearful of him from Libya. And uh, he always, Gaddafi, would be surrounded by female bodyguards. And normally they were, they were teenager bodyguards. So, yes, when they realized that there were posters denouncing Gaddafi, I've never seen such a such such a type of uproar coming from 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 girls, uh, you know, spinning using karate against <laughs> against <laughs> demonstrators. It was quite a, it was quite a dramatic. It was quite a dramatic. Uh, so there was a fist flying and confrontation with the yeah. opposition, uh, Gaddafi oppos opposition and the and the bodyguard. So. Of course, there were few, and then eventually they they to, uh, to to flee. And the only sanctuary that they would find safety was within Zimbabweans. So then they came to to, to us for support. And uh, it was only then that he, uh, that violent ended. And of course, the police, uh, riot police, were in were, were they in full force? You know. Zimbabweans uh, supported the opposition, the Libyan opposition, to stand their ground because <laughs> it was a matter of numbers. Yeah. Yeah. Not by design and intent, but I suppose um, it was like, um, you know, comrades in arms. Yeah. Okay. Thank you for, for those very interesting stories indeed.
Um, next week we're going to look at chapter 10. Uh, like I said, chapter 9 and chapter 8 are covered in the pictures. Yeah. Uh, but the whole of chapter 8 uh, is just the full um, court case which you can go through and and uh, we're not going to read the whole uh, court case here. Yeah. But it is there in full from A to Z. Then, of course, chapter 10 is about your return to Zimbabwe after nine years in December 2011. Indeed. We're going to talk about that next week. So I would like to thank our viewers for watching uh, both on Facebook and we're going to post this on YouTube. Um, it's uh, we, we are using Skype to record this and then we'll post it on YouTube soon after. But these two videos, uh, because Elliot was also um, was also recording or was also live on Facebook, so he's also going to post on his Facebook. Yeah. So, um, are there any questions? I didn't have, don't have any questions today from my Facebook, but do you have any questions there or any people you'd like to acknowledge? Um, I've got Cyprian and Savannah, I'd like to acknowledge them, but there were others before that. The, the names have disappeared now. But I know George was there. I still have, I still have, I still have a couple of names. Uh, General Isaac, as usual, Swift, uh, Prof Taffy, uh, Brighton GB, uh, Henley, Maburai, uh, still on there. Uh, let me see if I've got any questions there. Yes, uh, a picture tells a thousand words. Thank you very much. Uh, I was watching your interview. And, uh, okay, well done. So, yes, Prof Taffy says uh, he, he watched our protest in Portugal. Uh, so he's, he has been following. And, um, yeah, he's very supportive of that. So yes, uh, not necessarily questions, but uh, compliments. Okay. Yes. Okay, so I think we end it here this week. And uh, on next week, we're going to finish the book of chapter 10. But there's another book uh, which you wrote on sustainable development. Yes. I think that one will help us to maybe to delve into the economic yeah. issues. Social justice. And so from security, yeah. it and, economic, and, and really what's happening around the world. I mean, we'll look at that and then... Yeah. Uh, how many chapters is that one, do you know? I think um, maybe about uh, eight, if I remember. Yeah, so I think we'll go deep into the, into the sustainable development issues with that one. Yeah. And uh, thank you for watching, guys. Um, Pastor Mitz, thank you for joining in. I think you've joined us when we're just getting <laughs> finished. But anyway, the uh, the video will be available on, on, on my Facebook wall. So thank you for watching. Thank you for watching, my viewers. Uh, we'll meet again next week, almost the same time on Sunday. Thank you. Goodbye.